Hello and welcome back. Well, last week I did kind of a controversial video about threading, uh, whether to feed with the compound or straight in with the cross leg. Had a lot of good comments, great comments. Anyway, one of the comments from Rick, Richard Green, yeah, Richard Green, uh, said, I need to know what's involved in front of that. Go back to the basics of how to just set up a lathe for threading. So I told him, I said, come back Friday and I'll have you a video. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over the basics of threading. It won't be all inclusive and I'm sure I'll overlook something, but I think it'll uh, be enough information to get you started. Let's go for it. Okay, there's two types of lathes out there. A uh, lot of variations of them, but some of them have a quick change gearbox, which, which is what my lathe has, and some have change gears. And change gears requires going into this gear cover here and changing gears to get the right feed rate. But I've got the quick change gearbox on mine, so I'm going to describe that. If you've got the change gears, usually the cover will open and there'll be a chart in there, and it'll tell you which position to put what gears. So, for the quick change gearbox, we're going to do 13 threads per inch. And I think I've got to set it up for that. But you find 13 on here, which is right here, so I need to move one over. Sometimes you have to manually move the lathe to get this to engage. There you go. So right here is 13. Now this is particular to this lathe, so it's going to be different on different lathes. But I've got a... Uh, Come over here and it says in. Well, over on this side right here, I've got a sliding gear. It's like a low and a high range. You slide that in. Then right here it says left, center, right. And right is referring to this lever right here. That's to the right right now. That's to the left. That's to the right. So the gearbox is all set up for threading 13 threads per inch, which is what half 13 is what we're going to make. Now that gearbox is controlling this lead screw. That lead screw will feed the carriage 8 threads per inch. Okay, this is the carriage. Let's look at the controls on here. There are various different kinds. This one has a clutch. If I tighten this, it starts the carriage moving. Loosen it, it stops the carriage. Some do not have this clutch. Some only have the half nut. And the half nut is just what it describes. It's two nut halves that go like that and they clamp the lead screw and start this feeding. But for threading, now this lathe has a clutch and it has a half nut. For threading, you have to use the half nut. So, most lathes have a three position selector. This one's got kind of an awkward setup here. It has three different positions. Some of them have a lever, which is a lot easier. But usually, the middle position is the half nut. The bottom position, I think, is the, yeah, it's the cross slide. And the top position moves the carriage. But the, we're interested in the middle position, which on most lathes will be the half nut. Okay, the half nut engages, and when you turn the lathe on, it moves the carriage. Now that's not the direction we want the carriage to move, so there's another step over here. This right here is a reverse lever. It's got to be in the bottom position. You'll have to turn the lathe over manually to get that to engage. So that's going the opposite direction that it was. The center position is neutral. It's nice and quiet. Because there's no, no gears running. So I want it in this position. Moving toward the chuck. Okay, the next step is going to be kind of hard to see. Right there is a scale. And that's angles. Threads are cut at 60 degrees and 30 degrees is half of that. But you want this set 
a little bit less than 30 degrees, 29 and a half, 29 to 29 and a half. And I'm going to go more into that in a minute. Okay, right here are some half inch threads I already cut. I'm going to use a carbide insert, but you could grind your own high speed steel uh, tools. I'm not going to go into that today. But you can see that matches those threads pretty good. You have to be careful on what size you use. You'll notice there's two different sizes there. The larger one is for larger threads, obviously. Uh, you can cut smaller threads with a larger tool, but you can't cut larger threads with a small tool. And I think this one is rated for uh, eight threads per inch. That's how, how deep I can go. I can't remember for sure, but that's what we're going to be using today. If you look at this graphics I made, this is a tool being fed with each step. And it's a little bit confusing, but this is just for demonstration purposes. We've got our set at 29 and a half. At 29 and a half, every cut you make is cutting mostly on this side, but a little bit on this side. If you don't have, a, if you had it set over 30 or 31, it would leave a like a sawtooth pattern cut on the on this right side. So basically, what you're doing is cutting probably 90% of your threads with this side, and you're just barely touching with this side. That's the purpose of setting your compound at. 29 or 29 and a half is to make it so that you just barely touch this side and, and eliminate the possibility of a stair step pattern like that. Right here I got a couple of thread uh, thread charts, kind of useful information. I'm not going to go into detail on it, but there's a uh, minor diameters, minimum and maximum, and if I go down to half inch, uh, half 13, the minor diameter is 0.417. And if you look up here, I don't know if you can see it on, on the camera or not. There's the minor diameter. It's not quite as deep as it goes, but it, the thread profile is slightly rounded at the tip, so the bottom of the thread is the minor diameter. Okay, the reason we need to know that minor diameter, and you don't really have to know it, you, uh, you can guess at it, but I had to make an, here's one I've already cut, see that undercut right there without any threads? That provides a place for me to pull out the tool. So we've got to make an undercut at the end of our threads that is uh, 417 deep, or diameter. So this is half inch stock, it's not that critical, but I, I need to go 50 thousandths in to get 100 thousandths less in diameter. Because, at least on my lathe, now lathes change, but at least on my lathe, my dials are radius. In other words, if I move the dial 1 thousandths, my tool moves 1 thousandths. On some lathes, they're 200 thousandths per turn on the dial, so when you move the dial one thousandths, you change diameter by one thousandths. But on this lathe, your uh, the dial indicates what you take off on each side. So if I need a hundred thousandths smaller in diameter, I have to take fifty thousandths off on each side. I don't know if that made sense or not, but I'm going to go in and reset my dial at zero where I'm touching and then go fifty thousandths in. And the width of that cut, I'm going to make two passes on this blade here, is not important, but it's according to how fast your reflexes are, and, and that'll be clear in a minute. Okay, I've changed tools, and I'm going to cut, cut a little bevel on the lead edge of that.
Now that looks like a big bevel, but it won't after it's threaded. Okay, I've got my threading tool in there, but let's take a look at this setup a little closer before we get started. My cross, I mean my compound, you'll notice there's a little bit of the dovetail exposed right there. If I go beyond like that, it's not as rigid. So it's a good idea to see some of your dovetail on the back side there. My tool post is slightly to the right. Well, if I've got my tool post set right there, when I put this threading tool on there, I'm off the edge of the compound. So that tool post, I mean the tool is not very well supported right there. So it would probably work, but ideally the tool needs to be, well, ideal is right center. But sometimes you can't do that centered on the compound. But as long as it's over the cross slide dovetail on one side, you're probably pretty good. And you got to watch out for clearance to your chuck or your collet chuck. I got a collet chuck on there now. And that's another thing. A uh, collet chuck will be more solid. Uh, you'll get better results from a collet chuck just because you don't have an extreme amount of overhang from the chuck. When you have a chuck st sitting way out here, there's a lot of ability for that to flex right there. It's just not as solid. So the collet is very solid. Okay, right here's the thread gauge. And I'm not going to go into all the details on it. But it's got a little V here that you can lay the tool in and check to see if it's square to your work. You put the uh, one half of the gauge on the work and run the tool into that groove and you can rotate your tool post until it's square. That looks fairly good. Most of the time I just guess at it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is run the tool into the work just so it's barely touching. And what I'm trying to do here, make sure you can see what I'm doing down here. I want this handle to be in a convenient location. And I'm going to back my cross slide out a little bit so that when I'm down here, straight down, I'm touching the work. And I'm going to re-zero this. Okay, now that's set on zero. Re -zero reset my dial. Now I'm going to go back up here and make sure with my compound that I'm touching the work. Zero, touching the work here, I moved it with the compound. The reason I did that with every pass, when you get to that undercut there, you'll disengage the half nut, come back, go back to the beginning, go back to zero, and advance with the compound. Okay, here's another thing that may be different on different lathes. This is a homemade threading dial. So to cut threads, you really need a threading dial. It's possible to do without it, but it's way easier if you have one. And I'll get more into that a little later. But you'll notice on the threading dial, there's two, four, eight, eight marks. Well, some threading dials have more. But generally, the long marks, the long four marks, let's see, how am I going to explain this? Okay, here's the uh, threading dial, and they're usually, now they may be different. I made this one, so I don't have any numbers on it. They're usually numbered one through four, and for even threads, you can throw it in on any long mark or short mark. For odd threads, like we're going to cut, if you start on a long mark, you have to throw it back in on a long mark. So the odd threads require that you throw it in on the same length mark and the even even threads you can throw it in on any mark. So even threads you can throw in in uh, eight different places and odd threads you can throw in on four different places. 
So if I pick a long mark, I got to stick with the long mark. If I pick a short mark, I got to stick with the short mark. Okay. As the lathe is running, the thread dial is turning. Now I need to really adjust this thread dial. It throws in just a little past that notch right there. But, like right there. The thread dial is set up right, it throws in right on the mark. But because we're cutting 13 threads per inch, I'm going to go with the long mark and stick with it. Okay, where we're at right now, the tool is just touching the work. When you first start threading, you can take really deep cuts. Uh, when I say really deep, maybe 20 thousandths. You could probably take more than that, but let's start out at 20 thousandths. So the first cut I make will be 20 thousandths, and after that I may drop to 10, or 12, or 5, and then 2. And the, the larger, the deeper you get into the cut, the less aggressive you are on your cut depth. Uh, toward the end, I'll probably get down to 1 or 2 thousandths. Kind of makes sense if you think about it. Instead of, this is a regular tool, but same thing applies. You know, you're just cutting with the tip. It's not really hard on the lathe, but when you're cutting, you know, really deep, you're cutting a lot of steel off at one time. Okay, let's make the first cut, and then we'll stop and talk about it. Right now would be a good time to have two cameras, but we're going to focus on the work first, and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing with the carriage. I'm going to throw it in on the long mark. I could throw it in on the short, but I'm going to go with the long mark. Throwing it in, first cut. Now here's where the reflexes come in. i got to throw the half nut out right in that undercut I made. Now I'm pulling the uh, cross light out one turn. Go back with the carriage to the start. Go back in one turn, back to zero. Advance my compound. I'm going to go ten thousandths. Now on this next cut, I'll show you what I'm doing on the carriage. Okay, I'm, I'm in position for the next cut, and I'm waiting for the long mark to come up to the top. Come up to the mark right there. Engage. The tool is getting close to the undercut. Okay, I'm in the undercut. Throw it out. Now I back the cross light out and go back to the beginning. Back to zero again. Advance my compound. I'm going to go five thousandths. And you do it again. Watch for the large mark. back the compound out one not the compound the cross light out one turn go back in to zero advance another two and a half thousand I'm in position to take the next cut waiting for the large mark I just passed one up there there's the mark engage Disengage at the undercut, back out, back to the beginning, back to zero on the cross slide, advance two and a half thousand. You'll notice here I'm getting getting fairly deep, so my my cuts are getting a lot less and we're gonna put oil on it. Disengage, back the cross slide out, back back to zero on the cross slide. Advance two and a half thousands. I, I could probably go more than two and a half, but okay, I'm waiting for the mark on the threading dial. Engage.
disengage at the undercut, back out, back to zero on the cross slide, advance two and a half more thousandths. Waiting for the mark, engage. Okay, about now you're probably wondering how to judge the depth. Well, what I usually do with half inch thread, I start out with half inch stock and I wait for the threads to get sharp. Now, is that the correct or best way to do it? Probably not. The best way to do it is to know the depth and, and double that for your compound movement. But this is the way I always do it and it works out good. talk about speed a little bit. You'll get a better cut if you speed the lathe up. Question is, do you have a good reflex enough to, to disengage the half nut before it hits your collar chuck or chuck? I think I can go the next speed up, so I think I will. Starting out, you will definitely want to go slow. Now, I can't remember if I advanced the cross slide or not. I don't think I did. I mean compound. We're advancing the compound. I, I messed up there. Okay, I'm, I'm down to about 1,000, and the threads are getting fairly sharp. Let me take one or two more passes. Okay, let's try the nut on there. Okay, it feels like the thread is oversized. But this may not be the case. You've got little burrs on the top of those threads. Plus the threads are not supposed to be sharp, they're supposed to be slightly rounded. So you can use a file and do the same thing. That's still a little bit oversized. There we go. That's how you cut threads. Fairly good fit. Most definitely as good as any bolt. Nice smooth threads. 
Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and uh, ring that bell. Uh, if you got any questions, leave them in the comment and I'll try to answer them.